I'm Rick Streaker with the Packard Academy. Well, we've had some questions about C-frame motors. What are C-frame motors? How do they get that name? Well, these are examples of C-frame motors, and sometimes you might hear them called skeleton motors. Skeleton motors in that they don't have a shell around the motor, and that shell being finished off with end brackets at the end of it. So they are just like the bare bones of motors. Now they're called C-frame motors because if you were to look at that motor, and if you look at the lamination stack on the motor, it looks like a C. So that's how it gets its name. Now when selecting these motors, we select them just a little bit differently than what we do maybe a condenser motor. With condenser motors and with blower motors, we look at amps in trying to determine the proper horsepower of the motor. And if we look at belt drive motors, we look at horsepower and service factor when we select replacement motors. But when we're trying to get a replacement for a C-frame motor, and we want to determine the strength of the motor, we measure something called the stack height. This is the lamination stack. These sheets of steel in this motor. And if you were to measure that stack, you would replace it with a motor that has the same stack height in it. And that's going to give you equivalent horsepower in those motors. So we look at the stack height when we're trying to replace these. If you look at these two motors, for example, you'll notice this one's a stronger motor. It has a longer stack than what this motor is. So to match the horsepower, we're going to select them based upon stack height. Now another characteristic that's important about these motors is the rotation of the motor. Now if I look at the nameplate on this motor, this motor identifies it as being clockwise shaft end. This motor CWSE, clockwise shaft end. So now when I'm trying to define that rotation, it says shaft end. That means that I have to look at the shaft end of the motor when I'm determining the rotation. And it calls out CW, clockwise shaft end. That means when I'm looking from the shaft side of the motor, there's no shaft here, these would be the leads, and if I were looking from this side of the motor, I would call it LE, lead end of the motor. But the shaft end of the motor is considered clockwise, so that means when I'm looking from the shaft end, it's turning in a clockwise direction. Now, unlike many of our PSC motors, the permanent split capacitor motors, our condenser and blower motors, C-frame motors are not electrically reversible. So if it says it's clockwise shaft end, it's the only rotation I have. But what if I needed this motor to be counterclockwise? Well, I would have to find another motor that meets the same criteria, but is now counterclockwise. There's a little trick, though. If you can't find a motor like that, if you were to take this motor, remove the bolts through the motor, and that would allow me to take these end brackets off and to remove the rotor. Now, when I have this all loosened, I take this side of the motor and put it on this side. I take this side of the motor, this end bracket, and put it on this side. Now as long as the rotor lines up perfectly in the center of the lamination, I can do that. 
And now, remember this was clockwise shaft end. If I have the shaft coming out this side, remember clockwise, this rotation, it's still turning the same rotation, but the shaft's out here now, and so it's now turning counterclockwise shaft end if the shaft is coming out here. So that's a little trick that might help you to uh, uh, replace a motor if you're having a hard time finding it. Most of these motors are single speed. Some of them are two. This is a two speed motor. And they're called two pole motors. So they're going to operate around 3000 RPM. So that's typically what you're going to get with the C-frame motors. You might find a, a two-speed every once in a while, but most of them are going to be about 3,000 RPM. A lot of these motors are going to have cord sets or plugs on them. So when we look at this one, we look at this one, there are plugs on those. This has a special plug on it, and this has some special connectors as well. Sometimes that can create a little difficulty when you're trying to find a replacement, trying to make sure you have the same plug on it. What you could do though, if you don't have a replacement with the same plug, you could use the plug on the old motor and splice it to the new motor to give you the plug that you need. Now with this being a two-speed, you'd have to make sure that you put this on a two-speed motor and that the plug corresponds with the speeds that you're looking for on that motor. But that could be done then, just by splicing the cords from the old motor onto the new motor. Now some of these motors could be used in applications like pumps, such as in an aquarium pump. But these motors are designed to have a fan on the shaft and that fan moves air over the motor and prevents that motor from overheating and burning up. So if I have a motor like this that I put onto an aquarium pump without having air moving over the motor to keep it from overheating, it's very possible that the motor could burn up. So in a lot of those applications where maybe I connect the motor to a pump instead of a fan blade or a blower, there would be an extension on the back of this where the shaft comes all the way through. And on the back end of that, there would be a cooling fan that would move air over the motor to prevent it from overheating and from failing. There's not a lot of mystery with these motors. They're very simple and very easy to find suitable replacements if you just keep in mind some key characteristics. We need to make sure of the speed of the motor, the rotation of the motor, the shaft size of the motor. And if the shaft size is too small, there are uh, kits available that will allow you to put an adapter onto the shaft to bring it up to a larger size. The rotation of that motor though, you might be able to change it, possibly. The cords could be an important characteristic. But keeping in, in mind some of the tricks that can be used to get these things to work, uh, there, there are motors that are readily available that can be adapted to fit the applications that you have. Well, I hope I give you a, a little bit of insight into C-frame skeleton mo motors. Uh, we hope you come back to the Packard Academy real soon. Thanks for joining us today.